Hey everyone, welcome to this new Wii tutorial for Python and interfacing with microcontroller. So by starting here, I um, programmed this microcontroller to read the analog data from this four potentiometer and send it using a UART communication. The message will be in this way. So if I connect using each term, I'll be seeing the data going here. And usually this is a quite difficult to visualize and to understand what's going on with the data. So instead of using this H term, we're going to use Python this time to understand, visualize the data and apply other stuff. So let me disconnect and bring the interface that we are going to create using Python to make this possible. So first of all, we are going to make the communication. So let's use the COM3 because this is the only available and we will be able to refresh. Then let's select the COM3 and also select the boat rate that we are going to use, which is the same as this one, and connect. So you can see my Python program here checked that the, it's synchronized with the microcontroller and there is four channel of data coming. Okay, that's a good thing. And after that, let's add here to visualize and start. So let's put here and start the streaming. So here we do have our picture. So this is a raw data. So which means we are seeing the data between zero and 4,000 as the STM32F4 is a 12 bit um, ADC. And I said, we do have four uh, inputs. So let's add the four channels. So let's add this one and let's add this one too. And also let's add the third channel. So you can see we can visualize now all the channels streaming together. But however, I'm still having some trouble and I would like to see only the channel zero. So let's go for the channel zero and add it here. And you can see there's a lot of noise within channel, even it's a very small noise. So how about we add for this channel a filter like this? And you can see the data how is filtered. But if I play a little bit with the channel here, you can see this filter is good for the small values to detect, but quite horrible to contact, to, to see the big variation. So this is really absorbing a lot and we don't see the data. So let's add another filter. Let's say the full channel zero and put a ghost filter here. And you see this a green one added. And if we move like this, you can see that the new filter we are putting is less accurate at the small value, but it gives a very good follow up on biggest one. And also, let's add another one. Maybe I would like to be sure that I have my value within a certain position. So let's say I would like to have within 2000. If my value is less than 2000, it's green. If it's more, it become red. It's a dangerous thing for me. Yeah, that can be a thing that we would like to see. And also, let's also add here another one and we check, okay, so we do have this one, but we'd like to see it as a voltage value. So I, I understand exactly which voltage is placed for. And you can see the, the, the noise in the, in the voltage is not that big. It's between 0566 and 0558. So it's really small. Um, gap that we do have but we can visualize everything but wait again if we would like to see the data so let's start saving the data and right now immediately it starts saving the data so now we can even remove these ones and keep it saving so even so now let me stop for example and let me show you how we can visualize the data so this is happening within the code so let me bring it here like this, and this is the one. So it saves all the data. It started saving when we clicked at the second 150, and we do have all the data. So now, within this tutorial, we are going to introduce this um, user interface that will connect with the microcontroller and will help you to understand your data, visualize it, and also save it. So if you are interested to understand how the tutorial will be working, stay tuned with this episode. 
Welcome to this video zero, which is an overview on the tutorial and an understanding of the big picture of the program. So as usual, the code is available on GitHub in the whole steps of the tutorial. So each step will be documented and you will have the code up to there. Today's video will have the full final product of the Python and also the C program that can be immediately inputted within your STM32F1. So the code will be written in Python and the text editor will be VS Code. We are going to use for one video to explain the code, the C language, um, to explain how the microcontroller will be working inside so you can reproduce your code in a different microcontroller. We are going to use the H term in the same video where we are explaining the code to, to run manually the communication protocol with a microcontroller. And finally, it would be um, very important that you will have some understanding on Python. I'll be doing my best to explain in details the code of Python, but having the basic understanding of, for example, the lists, a little bit of how Python works, that will help you a lot to understand quickly. So from hardware perspective, I'll be using the STM32F1 as we have created a whole tutorial about a lot of peripheral. So that's a very good example to show how it will interact with Python. I will need an FTTI to interface with the PC. In the opposite, if you do have an Arduino, you will not need an FTTI because it's already integrated in the board. And finally, I will be needing some potentiometer because we will have some input and we can play with the data to see what's going on. So the tutorial structure will be quite simple. So we will see what is the tutorial objective and also the code architecture and layer. Then after that, a quick code overview so we can see the whole code so you, you will understand how we are going to go step by step and finally the tutorial structure. So let's start with the tutorials objective. So here we will have a PC and the microcontroller whatever an Arduino or an, um, an STM32 or even a PIC. So we are going to connect. After that communicate. Connecting between the serial is something communicate is a different thing. After that, using the Python, we will make the display, make also the record of the data, and also transform it. So this is the whole thing that we are going to play with this time. But most important, we need to manage all these steps together and secure each one of them. So the program can be consistent and understand how to manage issues or bugs internally without really interrupting the working of the program. So in general, you will have a working example of multiple Python libraries. So we are going through a lot of libraries to make this happen. And also we will be using the classes or object-oriented programming, and you will have a practical, practical application using this. So it will be very interesting for you to learn from a practical example. Finally, you will understand the interaction between Python and MCU. It seems simple and obvious, but we will go and take a look on how sometimes there's some complication that we must take in account to have a proper communication between program. So let's take a look now on how this program is constructed and the layers of this program. So first of all, this is the GUI, this is the program that we created. But behind that, the next layer after that, We'll be using tkinter and we will be creating a lot of frames. We will have a connection frame, a communication frame, a display frame, which have inside it frames. And why would you using frames? This is because to manage easier the widgets inside and the data flowing from those guys and also the data going to them. And we will have a widget management and we will divide this using a classes. So, and that one, we will need also a matplotlib. We will need to get some special libraries. We will need to put some special setup and some certain logic to make this one working. And after this one, we will need to have a data transformation. We will use a bit of NumPy, CPy, and we will make a value conversation, data filtering. So there's a, some fancy stuff to bring here and to show a little bit of nice data and improving the visualization of our content. And behind that, we will use a threading. 
So improving the performance of our program and the user interface. Actually, without threading, it will be almost impossible to, to make the um, user interface working properly. And using that threading, we will make an extraction of the data. So we will be interacting with the serial. We will make the data control. We will be, sh be sure or ensure that we are receiving the right data. We are also preparing the data using the threading. And plus in red, I added here, controlling the threading means when we stop or start the threading, if we don't take a certain preparations and setups, we may have a failure or a problem to close our program. And behind that, we will use also the Pi serial to make the serial communication. So we will have the connection, open and stop, the data, receive and transmit, because we will need to have a certain protocol and a serial setup. So we'll have to set up our serial data so we can have the connection and the data receive and transmit properly working. Then we will have a communication protocol. This is not the Python stuff. This is more understanding how a microcontrol controller will interact with Python. So we will see how both these two machines will be working together, how a microcontroller will send the data, how Python have to read the data, and also the other way, just to understand that this communication protocol will allow a smooth transfer of data in both sides. Finally, at the end, there is an embedded code. This is a C programming. So we will have a a, to a whole video dedicated on understanding, not getting the data because that's a different thing. That's something that you can easily find, but how you manage the protocol of receiving and sending. And also at the end, constructing the message of the communication. There is a communication between a microcontroller and the Python or the, the PC. So we need to be sure that we receive the data at the, like the right size. And we will have also a message that we need to construct at the microcontroller itself. Okay, that was all the layers. So there is a lot of learning and the stuff that we will be seeing together. Then now let's have a quick look at just an overview of the code. So you will understand what we are going to do and what we are going to construct together. Here we are at the main program. So this is a program where we are be calling. So at the beginning, we do have four files. And in each file, so we do have the master pi. So this is the one where we are going to run our program. And there is a we or user interface um, communication control and data control and also serial control. So the main one is just calling the whole thing and putting the whole data, initializing it and running the main program. And after that, we do have here four classes that we will be going to build one by one. And those classes are quite, um, some of them are simple, other a little bit less, but let's take a look, for example, to this one, you do have like each class will be doing a certain stuff based on the communication GUI, the connection GUI, and the display GUI. So each one of them will have certain methods that we will be constructing one by one. And this is the way that we are going to do our program. So it will be modular. And after that, we do have the serial class where we do have the method to get the list of available ports or comms, open the serial, close the serial, synchronize, and the data stream. Finally, the class that will manage the data, we will have the data cleaning, getting the message, having the filtering, saving the data. So that will be quite a big class that we are going to build um, through all the videos. So you could see it's, um, it's a long, long program, but we will do it in a way that will be structured in classes and in methods so we can easily maintain it and also improve it or change it. I hope this is a good overview for the code. So let's go and take a look now how the tutorial is structured. Let's get back to our slides and have a final review on the tutorial. That will be a three big step tutorial. The first one will be the communication or the serial communication preparation part. And in this one, we are going to start creating the connection manager GUI. So there is a user interface where we are going to manage only the connection. 
After that, we are going to add the serial, which is related with the GUI. So at the beginning, just the interface, and then we add the logic of the serial. After that, we are going to make the interfacing logic and the MCU program. So this third one is especially for the people who do, does have a different microcontroller. So you can really take immediately a look at that video so you can understand how to connect your microcontroller with this Python program. So this is really the, uh, the phase where you don't have Python. You just have a review of the program inside our STM32F1 and get inspired to make your Python program like that. I mean, your Arduino program or whatever your microcontroller is. And after that, we are going to the communication GUI. So we are going to prepare the GUI for establishing communication with the microcontroller. Then we add the serial part of the communication. After that, we go to the part two, where it's more based on the data display. So first of all, we are going to add the data display GUI. And this is a little bit complicated. We will split it in the number six and number seven, where we'll add some adding bottom so we can see as much channels as we want. And also we can add this number eight, which will start the data display for the serial communication. So we are going to prepare the data on the video eight. In video nine, we were going to display the data flow. So we are able to have the data and we can display it. And then we can have the graphic display. So we can have the whole data and put it on a chart and we are good to have that. And finally, we will do a data management or data transformation. So we go to add some noise filter and also some graphic um, data graphic colors filter. So it, it will depend on the position of the, um, of the lines. And after that, we are going to recording the data. Then we will have a certain conclusion and review about the performance of the microcontroller, the performance of the whole things, and how we can improve this program to have a better way of doing. I hope you will enjoy this tutorial. I put it a lot of time and effort to make it, and I'm be very happy to get your comment um, and to work with you guys. Thank you so much, and see you for the next video.